Hi everyone, welcome back to Feeding Raven Doodles, a pet parent's guide to nutrition. Today's topic is plant-based diets. Now, as people around the world become more aware of their own health, nutrition, and environmental impact, many have shifted toward plant-based diets. And some pet owners have even chosen to extend their beliefs and preferences onto their pets as well. And therefore, plant-based pet diets are becoming much more popular today than they ever have been before. Today we're going to be talking about why people choose plant-based diets for their pets, concerns with these diets, and the types of plant-based pet diets that are available on the market today. You'll have to forgive me. Um, as usual, Raven has decided not to cooperate, so please bear with me. I'm going to define a couple of terms that I'm going to be using throughout this video, uh, just for clarity's sake. So vegetarian diets are diets that are made without meat, but that still may contain eggs or dairy products. Vegan diets are made without any animal products whatsoever. And plant-based diets are kind of encompassing both of these definitions. So plant-based diet is a diet that is made mostly of plant material and that has little or no animal product. I'll be using the term plant-based diets throughout this video just for conciseness and to be more inclusive of the definitions that I've just given you. People choose plant-based diets for their pets for similar reasons as they choose themselves. It is important to remember that vegetarianism and veganism is a personal lifestyle choice, and it may work well for some people and not well for others. Studies have actually shown that most people who consume diets that are low in animal ingredients are actually deficient in many nutrients. Therefore, it's difficult for human vegetarians to have complete and balanced diets. We'll get into the concerns of plant-based pet diets a little later on, but this is one of them. One of the reasons people choose plant-based diets is for sustainability concerns. People believe that animal agriculture is to blame for much of the greenhouse gas emissions and climate change that we've seen over the years. It's important to note, however, that agriculture actually makes up less than 10% of total greenhouse gas emissions in the United States with livestock making up less than half of that number. Over the years, selective animal breeding, better management, and improved farming practices have also led to more efficient and uh, sustainable use of resources. Therefore, we can make more meat, milk, and eggs with less animals, land, water, and feed. Speaking of land, another argument against animal agriculture is that um, livestock takes up a lot of the land that we use for agriculture, and people believe that crops should be used to be grown on this land instead. It is true that animal agriculture makes up about two-thirds of all agricultural land, but that's because most of the land is non-arable. You wouldn't be able to grow crops there even if the animals weren't there. Another thing to keep in mind is that livestock eat plants that humans and other non-ruminant species cannot consume. For example, they eat grass, and they also eat byproducts from the corn, cotton, soy, and other industries. So th our livestock are actually doing a, an important form of recycling for all of these other industries. Humans eat the corn cob, and the cows are going to eat the rest of the plant. Humans use cotton fibers, and the cattle are going to eat the rest of that plant. And likewise with soy, we use the soybean, and the cattle eat the rest of the plant. One last thing to keep in mind is that pet food is an essential part of animal agriculture. In the United States, most people eat the skeletal muscle meat, and few consume other parts of the animal, such as the internal organs like liver, kidney, heart, and others. All of these uh, pieces of the animal are considered undesirable, undesirable for human consumption and therefore would be wasted if not for the pet food industry. These byproducts are recycled, once again, into pet food. And uh, for a lot more information on byproducts, um, check out my video, Byproducts and Meat Meal. Another common reason that people choose a plant-based lifestyle is because of ethical considerations. Many people don't wish for animals to die for their own benefit. But when considering pet food, with very few exceptions, animals are not slaughtered specifically to go into pet food. They're slaughtered for human consumption. 
like I mentioned previously, much of what goes into pet food is the leftovers and the byproducts. You can also rest assured that there are dozens of laws and regulations, both nationally, internationally, and state to state, that ensure animal welfare and humane handling in farming and slaughter situations. Animal welfare is defined as how an animal is coping with the conditions in which it lives. An animal is in a good state of welfare if it is healthy, comfortable, well-nourished, safe, able to express innate behavior, and is not suffering from unpleasant states such as pain, fear, and distress. Good animal welfare requires disease prevention and veterinary treatment, appropriate shelter, management, nutrition, humane handling, and humane slaughter or killing. And finally, the nutritional aspect. Many people believe that a plant-based lifestyle is healthier than eating animal products. Pet owners extrapolate this from some of the many studies that have been done in human health and nutrition that tell us to eat less meat and more plant-based products. However, these studies are incredibly conflicting and inconclusive. There's currently no definitive scientific evidence showing that eating meat is harmful to human health. And there are certainly no studies showing that it's harmful to pet health. It's important to realize that animals are not humans. Dogs and cats have much different nutrient requirements than we do. And it's inappropriate to suggest that they should eat the same as we do. We'll get into the health aspect next. Now we're going to talk about some of the concerns that are raised with plant-based diets. These include species concerns, digestibility and bioavailability concerns, and nutrition concerns. Now, while dogs are omnivores and they have no specific requirements for nutrients that must come from animal sources, cats are obligate carnivores. This means that they require certain nutrients to be in their diet, and these nutrients only come from animal sources. For example, the nutrients taurine and arachidonic acid are two examples of such nutrients. Because cats require these nutrients and they have to come from animal sources, it is impossible to get a truly vegan diet for a cat. And a vegetarian diet might not be a good choice either for either dogs or cats, which we'll talk about next. Digestibility refers to how well an animal's digestive system can break down certain ingredients. Studies have shown that animal sources of nutrients are actually more digestible than our plant sources. Bioavailability refers to how well an animal can utilize the nutrients that are found in certain ingredients in the diet. Studies have also shown that several nutrients are more bioavailable when they come from animal sources versus plant sources. So these are two other things to keep in mind when considering plant-based diets. Specific nutrient concerns are definitely important when talking about plant-based diets for dogs and cats. To gain a better understanding of what I'm about to talk to you about, definitely check out my video, Nutrient Requirements, to learn all about what dogs and cats need in their diets. Many pet owners believe that to get a good understanding of the quality of protein, you can check out the ingredients list or the guaranteed analysis, but this isn't necessarily the case. The total quantity of protein is stated on the guaranteed analysis, but it doesn't tell you anything about the quality of that protein protein. Plants are low in percent protein, meaning that they have a lower proportion of protein in regards to the other nutrients that are found in plants. Plant proteins have a low chemical score and biological value because of their limiting amino acids. Now this doesn't mean that plants are terrible sources of protein. They can be a great source of complementary protein. But if they're the sole protein source, they, there must be many different plant materials in that diet to get all of the essential amino acids that our dogs and cats require. 
Another thing to keep in mind is that plants have a lower protein digestibility, like I mentioned previously, than do animal sources of these ingredients. And so plants require more cooking and processing than animals, animal ingredients do. One more concern is taurine. Taurine is an amino acid that is essential for cats, but not for dogs. Dogs can actually make taurine in their bodies using its precursors, methionine and cysteine, but cats cannot, and therefore it needs to be in their diet. Taurine is only found in animal proteins, and this is one of the many reasons that cats are called obligate carnivores, like I mentioned previously. Arachidonic acid is a fatty acid that is required by cats and is only found in animal fat sources, not plant fat. EPA and DHA are two of the omega-3 fatty acids that are required by growing and reproducing animals, like puppies and kittens and pregnant and lactating mothers. The best source of EPA and DHA is fish oil, but it can be found in algae, which is technically not a plant. <laughs> Fiber is a big concern with plant-based diets. Many plant-based diets have high fiber, often much higher than traditional diets. High fiber increases bile acid secretion and can degrade taurine, which is an essential amino acid of cats, and it can lead to taurine deficiency in both cats and dogs. High fiber also decreases the total digestibility and the protein digestibility, which can cause nutrient deficiencies. High fiber can also decrease mineral uptake, such as calcium, phosphorus, and magnesium. Vitamin A is a fat-soluble vitamin of concern in plant-based diets. It comes in two forms beta-carotene, which is found in plants, and retinoids, which are found in animal ingredients. Dogs have the ability to convert beta-carotene from plant sources into vitamin A, or retinol, but cats do not have this ability. They have to eat animal source retinoids, another reason that they're called obligate carnivores. Another vitamin of concern is vitamin B12. It's not found in plant sources, only animal sources. However, it can be made synthetically and supplemented into the diet. Vitamin D is a third vitamin of concern. It also comes in two forms, vitamin D2 and vitamin D3. Vitamin D2 comes from yeast and fungi. Vitamin D3 comes from animal sources. There's not enough scientific evidence showing that dogs or cats can convert vitamin D2 to D3. Therefore, dogs and cats need vitamin D3 to be in their diets, since they're not like humans and they cannot convert sunlight into vitamin D. There are several minerals of concern with plant-based diets as well. The bioavailability of minerals like iron, magnesium, phosphorus, and zinc is very poor when they come from animal sources due to their chemical formulation. Parts of plants, uh, like oxalates and phytic acid, can also cause decreased absorption of certain minerals like calcium, zinc, iron, and manganese, which can be an issue with bioavailability as well. Now, it's important to remember that while diets made solely with plant products are not really ideal for dogs and cats, this isn't because plants are bad for our dogs and cats. Our pets require over 40 nutrients to be in their diets in different proportions so that they can lead a help healthy and happy life. Animal sources and plant sources of ingredients each contribute necessary nutrients to the diet. They provide what is called complementary nutrition. Certain nutrients come from plant ingredients Certain nutrients come from animal ingredients, and they can balance each other out. This is why a traditional diet is better than a plant-based diet for dogs and cats. Homemade diets can be a great option if they are formulated and prepared properly. 
However, most homemade diets, especially plant-based homemade diets, are not nutritionally complete and balanced. Pet owners must work with board-certified veterinary nutritionists in order to get that diet complete and balanced. I have a lot of information in my video, Homemade Diets, so I definitely encourage you to check this video out if you are considering this option. There are commercial over-the-counter plant-based pet diets as well. However, there's not enough research showing their safety, and there are no feeding trials that have been done on these products. However, studies have shown aftermarket that many diets plant-based pet diets are not safe or completely imbalanced. Studies have shown that nutrient levels do not meet AFCO regulations and that the labeling is not consistent with AFCO either. So commercial over-the-counter plant-based pet diets are probably best to be avoided. Another option is therapeutic diets. And for more information on what therapeutic diets are and why they work, check out my video, Therapeutic Diets. Now there are only a few therapeutic plant-based diets on the market, and they're produced by science-based pet food companies who employ board-certified veterinary nutritionists and perform research and feeding trials. And this extensive scientific research and these feeding trials back up the digestibility and safety of these diets. These diets are often a good choice for pets with health conditions or food allergies to different animal products. In summary, it's important to remember that dogs and cats do not have the same nutrient requirements or preferences as humans do. And it's important not to anthropomorphize our own views onto our dogs and cats. Both cats and dogs can thrive on traditional diets that have animal ingredients in them, and it's best to avoid commercial over-the-counter plant-based diets for both of these species. Now that's not to say that they cannot do well on a plant-based diet. Um, some pets do require a therapeutic vegetarian diet for health concerns. Um, and you should definitely talk to your pet's usual veterinarian if you do have concerns about this. If you are adamant about a vegetarian or vegan diet for your pet, you're going to want to choose a diet formulated by a reliable pet food manufacturer. And check out my video, How to Pick a Pet Food Part 1, to determine if a pet food manufacturer is reliable, safe, honest, and trustworthy, and most importantly, science-based. Last thing to keep in mind is that dogs and cats that are on a plant-based diet should see the veterinarian at least twice per year to ensure that they remain healthy on these diets. Thank you so much for watching this popular topics video on plant-based diets. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends if you enjoyed it. Leave comments down below if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos. And don't forget to check out that video's description where I give you all of the resources and scientific literature I used to create this video. Also, don't forget to check out feedingravendoodles.com where I have all my articles, videos, and resources in one place for you. Next time, we're going to be starting a new collection of topics, exotic pet nutrition. And we're gonna be starting out with ferret nutrition. Say bye, Raven.